Hello everyone, my name is Mark Dennis and today I am going to be doing a review of the Godox AD360 and AD180 flash heads. Well, we have five of these flash heads in the studio. We have three AD360s and two AD180s. Um, we have had them for nearly a year now, and I thought it would be a really good opportunity for me to go and let you guys know how they've been faring in what is a reasonably busy studio. Um, so without any further ado, I think I'll just give you a brief guided tour of one of the heads so you know what we're looking at. Well, here we have a Wistro AD180 unit. Um, it is very well made. You've got a lovely button layout on the back of the unit. There is a jogger wheel here, so uh, that allows us to change the output of the flash. A button for the manual focused assist. A button to turn on and off the buzzer. Um, a couple of buttons that allow you to run the HSS. And a button so you can fire the test. And of course, an on off button. On the side we have um, a USB port so we can connect the receiver for the Godox triggering system and below that we have another port so we can connect a sync lead should we wish to fire the flash that way. On the front of the unit you can see two red lights, these are for the manual focused assist. The light is fully adjustable and can go just below horizontal to all the way vertical. On the other side of the unit we have the port where you can plug in the cable that attaches to the battery. On the AD360 the front plate is slightly different where the manual focus assist lights are and you can also screw in a separate plate which enables you to put the light on a light stand. Apart from these differences and flash output, of course, the units are very similar. The, uh, the AD360 and the AD180 uh, can produce, uh, respectively, 450 pops or 900 pops in the case of the AD180 at full power, um, which is quite impressive on one single charge of battery. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with that and I have got no reason to dispute that. Um, I think the longest shoot we did with them was approximately that. So I think that's around about right. Um, just make sure that your battery is obviously fully topped up first. But as I say, I think that's pretty respectable. Recycling time on these guys is pretty okay if you're not using full power. If you're using 128th or 164th power or something like that, it is negligible. It's almost instantaneous. If, however, though, you were shooting at full power, the 180s um, are approximately two and a half seconds. The 8360s are allegedly four and a half seconds, and that is about right. Um, but uh, there is a method of getting around that, which I'll explain later on. Using a Y cable adapter made by Godox for these units, you can reduce the uh, recycling time by 50%. Um, for a single flash head on full charge, which makes it about a two second recharge on full power for the AD360. The bare tube flash is one of the big selling points of the Godox AD360, um, and this particular bare tube system works wonderfully with soft boxes. Here are a few photos from a recent shoot. AD360 and AD180 Godox lights come with a wide range of accessories, including snoots, diffusers, gels, and grids. There are beauty dishes, soft boxes, and more. If you have modifiers from a previous system and require them to be used, Godox now make a speed ring adapter for both Elenchrom and Bowen's S mounts. 
A must-have accessory is the battery holder that clamps to the stand and allows the battery to be hung at any particular height that you require. Very, very useful indeed. In truth, these guys have been a really, really good buy. Um, they're a lovely little light. They're really easy to go and hide behind people, stick under tables, have around corners and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they have been very, very reliable. Um, batteries have been good. They've held their charge really well. Uh, the whole units seem to be very well made. Nothing's fallen off or cracked or whatever. Um, we're all still on our original flash tubes. Um, so yeah, I really can't fault it. I mean, the only real thing I could probably have a go at this light with would be the lack of modeling lamp. They do have these uh, AF assist lights and there we go. But to be honest, they are flipping useless. Um, and of course, if you're using the parabolic umbrellas that we do here as well, and parabolic softboxes, uh, again, these are all hidden. So they're kind of a pointless thing, really. Outside of all that, I can honestly say they've been great. And um, I would probably be interested in buying another couple, I would think, as well. Um, we are interested in looking at the new Godox 200 unit. Um, I believe that's got a smaller battery, still has the bare tube flash and stuff like that. So maybe we'll have a look at those. Um, and I understand that they do a TTL version for both Canon and Nikon cameras. Now, if anybody has got one of those, I would be really grateful to hear how accurate the TTL is. Um, so perhaps if you could uh, put a comment in the comment section below, I would be uh, able to go and find out a bit more about them. Um, but outside of all that, yep, I can thoroughly recommend these lights. They've been a real eye-opener for me. I love the battery life. I love not having all the wires around the place. It has been great. On another note, uh, this is my first video and I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please feel free to subscribe and become my first subscriber. Um, that would be great. I am planning on doing a few more uh, tutorials and bits and pieces both in the studio and on location. Um, we do a bit of equine photography here, so we're going to do a bit of stuff with the horses and all sorts of things really. So we've got quite a bit coming up. So yeah, please feel free to subscribe and many thanks indeed for watching.